Evet başta Sayın Nuri Tuna'ya ve Daniel Kuning'e tekrar çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Şimdi Girsberger'de tasarım felsefesi ve süreçlerini çağımızın üslubu olan işlevsellik, yenilik ve estetik konularındaki görüşleriyle aktaracak olan Girsberger Tasarım ve Pazarlama Bölüm Başkanı, Red Dot ve If Design gibi uluslararası birçok ödülün sahibi endüstriyel tasarımcı Matthias Seiler'ı sunumunu yapmak üzere kürsüye davet ediyorum. Good evening to everybody and dear colleagues. I'm happy to be here and I'm happy that the interest is such big. Um, as I already mentioned, my name is Matthias Seiler and I'm responsible for design and marketing at Gilsberger. Originally, I'm an industrial designer. I have studied in Hamburg. And this evening, I will try to explain our special design understanding at Gilsberger. And I want to show you how the product design um, process goes on at Gilsberger. Doesn't work. Here it is. Okay. In the beginning of a chair design process, um, the most important thing a designer needs is a good idea, a very good idea. It's not enough just to take an existing chair and diversify its shape or its color or its details. This would be styling, but not furniture design. Every new chair needs a real good idea. And if you've got this idea, the design somehow develops automatically out of the idea. It has got less to do with styling. Um, so finding the right and basic idea for a new chair is the main task for the designer. And therefore, I would say that um, the designing work is much more mental work than it is drawing or modeling work. I want to show up this with a few famous examples of the chair design history. We all know that chair, for example. It is the most prominent um, design invention, I would say. It was Michael Tonnet who invented this chair in 1859. And his idea was, his great idea was, um, to use the new bandwood production process for a chair and he himself developed this technique and I think we can say that the design of this chair directly developed out of the bandwood process and the functionality of sitting. There's no decoration and no unlogic detail. It is just developed out of the idea he had. That's what I'm talking about. And it's beautiful, still today. And here we've got another example we all know, of course. It's the cantilever chair from Mark Stan. He developed it in 1925 at the Bauhaus. He was experimenting with gas pipe tubes, and he connected it with flanges. And with this method, he invented the principle of the cantilever chair, which doesn't rest on four legs. Even today, this is one of the most important structures in chair design history. A great idea. And in the 1950s, it was, again, a new production method. It was the molded plywood process, which made it possible to build a seat shell of wood out of one piece in a very ergonomic way. And Arne Jacobsen combined it with very minimalistic steel tube frames, and at the end, it was the aunt. Still today, a very important chair, and it was sold for 
millions and millions. By the way, the manufacturer Fritz Hansen um, didn't believe in the success of this chair and Arne Jakobsen himself had to sell the first chairs until Fritz Hansen said, had said, okay, we do it, we do the investment in mass production. We all know the result. And in the 60s, it was Werner Panton who had the next great chair design idea. He invented the monoblock cantilever plastic chair. In these days, in the 60s, he wanted to produce it in the plastic injection molding technique, but it was not possible because the plastic blends were not strong enough in these days. And the manufacturer, Vitra, had to build it in a very expensive um, glass fiber laminated product production technique. But 30 years later, it was possible. The new polypropylene blends were strong enough to do this chair in a plastic injection molding technique. And we all know it is an example of mass production chair design. So let me say the big inventions in chair design have already been invented. Um, today, but even today, it is, it is very important that every new chair has got a new idea, if it is a good design. And this, for example, I want to show with some Gersberger designs. Um, the idea of this chair is that the tube ends between the seat and the backrest and the backrest is formed close to the shape of the tube and the direction of the tube. It's a detail, but it's an important detail which makes the character of this chair and this is the idea of this design. I've got another one. This is a large chair system. Look at the red circle. This is the idea of this system. It, the idea is about um, the 90 degree junction. And this functionality is uh, possible because of the 45 degree uh, edge of, of, the, of this launch chair. This leads to a specific design and the functionality is visible. Another idea. This is a cantilever. No, this is a swivel chair. And look at the red circle again. The idea of this chair is that the backrest has on the front a stretched mesh, and on the back it has got flexible plastic fins. The mesh is for the comfort, and the flexible fins are for the right ergonomic support. And once again, the functionality is visible. A good idea. This is Burkhard Fuchter. Burkhard Fuchter is in Germany very well known um, because he had worked for many manufacturers as a designer all over the world. For example, Arflex, Capellini, Rosenthal, Fritz Hansen, Glöber, Davis, Arco, and so on. He built it up his own office in 1972, so he has got 40 years furniture design experience. Since 2010, he works mainly for Gisberger. And as you can see, he likes to talk. And we talk a lot and we discuss a lot, and sometimes new furniture design ideas come up. That's how it works. That's how design um, happens in reality, from my experience. And he, had a, he had, had a good design idea for us I want to talk about. No, it's not this chair. <laughs> Look at this launch chair. Of course, it is not designed by Burkhard Fuchter. And unfortunately, it is not a Giersberger chair. As you certainly know, this is the famous launch chair from, Ch of, from Charles and Ray Eames, designed in 1956. And this is the most famous launch chair, of course. And the idea of this chair was, maybe you know that, maybe you have heard that, Charles and Ray Eames wanted to create a launch chair which holds the human body in, a, in something like a boxing glove. 
in perfect comfort. This was their idea and they tried to create it. A great idea, a great idea, undoubtedly, but it must be okay to say that this launch chair is very big and very thick and it needs much space around. And therefore, Burkhard Fugter has had an idea for Giersberger. This is our jack launch chair, as you can see the red one there. And you can see the basic design idea within in the red circle. Um, the seat shell is mounted to four rubber buffers, and these four rubber buffers give flexibility and movement of the seat shell. Burkhard Fugter always says he wants to create comfort with less material. He says it's easy to create comfort if you use much foam. Everybody can do that. But his aim is to create the comfort with less material. And the thinner a construction is, the more sophisticated it has to be to be comfortable. And even the seat shell itself is flexible. And because of that, it can be thin. So this was his design idea. And it always it can be upgraded with an ottoman for the legs. And he's always thinking in systems, not in single chairs. When he designs a chair, in most cases, it's a family, it's a program. And here you can see the Jack Swivel chair, and even this chair has got these four rubber buffers which give flexibility. Usually, a swivel chair has got these uh, black mechanisms underneath the seat, you know that. But the jack chair only has got these four rubber buffers. Of course, it's not the same as a synchronous mechanism, but it gives some movement. And there is a conference, conference version. Even this has got the four rubber buffers, of course. It's interesting to know that Burkhard Fugter doesn't draw. Only a few sketches, and when he has got the idea and it is precise enough, he begins to build a prototype. And here you can see the real prototype with which he presented us his chair design idea. It worked absolutely perfect. It was very, very comfortable. Of course, Burkhard Fugter didn't invent the rubber buffers. Once again, it was Charles and Ray Eames in the 40s. They were the first one, as far as I know, who mounted the backrest to rubber buffers. But let's say Burkhardt was influenced by that chair, but he continued the idea. He mounted the whole seat shell to the rubber buffers. This is the very first rendering of our new, new swivel chair, the Diagon chair, you can see there. In June 2010, we told Burkhard Fogter that we want to have a new swivel chair, and it should be a beautiful one, please. And once again, he came up with an idea with rubber buffers. As you can clearly see, the backrest is mounted by rubber buffers to an aluminium backrest support, which has got a special design. In, the, in this first stage, I would say the chair looked a bit ugly, but we were quite sure that the basic idea, again, is a good idea. And so we asked Burkhardt to build out this um, aluminium backrest support to a beautiful design element. And that's how it looks in the end. This bedrest support is a good design idea because on one hand it improves comfort because it gives you additional movement when you lean back on the chair. And on the other hand, it's a good idea because it's a striking and prominent design element. I would call it an iconographic design element. When you have seen this element, this chair from, from the back, you remember this chair. And this is quite difficult to do. There are so many swivel chairs on market. 
But we go back to the design process. This was in December 2010. And here you can see the evolution of the backrest support. The last one, I think, is the best one. It's the best compromise between a logic design on one hand and on the other hand, a unique design. I was talking about the iconographic design. So he continued and worked out all the details. And this was in February 2011. Everything looked very clean and very transparent. I liked it. Here are some other renderings. And he worked details as an adjustable lumbar support. We need that for, for swivel chairs and an adjustable backrest support. And while he was working out the details of the design, um, our product uh, development department had to build up the first prototype to prove the design in terms of ergonomics, comfort, structure, solidity, stability, and so on. The result was everything is okay, but we had some problems with the mechanism, to admit. So we took a mechanism of an existing Gilsberger chair, and the Diagon concept worked well with this mechanism. And even as you can say, even as you can see, this is not only a functional prototype, this is a design model as well. It shows the actual design you can see there quite well. And when we sat in, the, in sit in this chair, we knew we are on the right way. It was astonishing comfortable because of the rubber buffers. Here you can see the detailing. Even in these days, it was well balanced. In July 2011, we decided that we want to do the backrest in three sizes, standard, medium, and high, in three different materials, stretched mesh, stretched woven bands, and upholstery. So once again, this is a system. I told you, Burkhardt always thinks on systems. A system which gives uh, many possibili possibility for individual choices. Yeah, this is something funny. In the middle, you can see the office wall of our head of development, Thomas Gasser. He always put the renderings, the drawings, the photographs in front of him on, on the board to keep them in mind and to get ideas how to realize everything. Um, norms have to be checked. Security have to, has to be checked. Statics have to be checked. We can say um, the technical demands have to be fulfilled. And in this stage of the development process, the engineer works close together with the designer. And the aim is to fulfill all demands on one hand, and on the other hand, to hold on to the original design. Here you can see a picture of the tooling of the backrest support, the aluminum die cast. It's very expensive, and it needs up to six months to build such a tooling. And that is how it looked in the end. Here you can see the range. On the left-hand side, the medium size. In the middle, the high backrest. And then on the right-hand side, the cantilever chair. And right, the standard size. As you can see, even the cantilever chair has got these two rubber buffers for the backrest. For the marketing and for the market launch, we had to produce nice pictures of the chair because we want to publish, publish the chair in magazines. And the magazines only publish uh, photo material which is attractive. So this is quite important to get good pictures which show the chair from, which show the main characteristics of the chair. 
Here another example, and another example. Yeah. And in the end, we did a marketing campaign, an advertising campaign, and of course, we show this chair from the backside because this is the main view of the chair, as I already mentioned. And what we did was a two-page advertisement in architecture and design magazines. And on the first page, you only can read the sign of the diagram, and you can see the sketch. There's no hint to the company, to the product, or whatever it is. So this page is only a question mark and not an ad. But if you turn the page, of course, you have got this picture, and then it is clear what is, what is meant with the sentence, the sign of the diagram. This unusual campaign helped us to make this chair well known in the markets of Germany and Switzerland. And for the marketing, we did something else. We have learned from the automobile industry. Um, on the website of the Diagon, we uh, built it up a configurator. On the left-hand side, you can choose the components, such as backrest, seat, color, and so on. And on the right-hand side, you see the choice, and you can click on the choice, for example, the medium backrest. And in the middle of the configurator, you have got a naturalistic rendering of your individual diagram. And you can move it and turn it to look at it closely. So I've talked, a lot, I've talked a lot about our collaboration with Burkhard Fuchter, but as a matter of fact, we are collaborating with many designers, not only Burkhard Fuchter. For example, Paul Brooks, he has designed Janos and Kira. Dieter Stierle, he was in the company for more than 30 years, and he was the design director, and he has designed many, many chairs for, for Giersberger. Now he's is, now is here retired. And then we've got Stefan Westmeyer. He is focused on our dining, con of our, on our dining, dining collection. This is totally different to our office collection. <laughs> then once again, Burkhard Fuchter. Until now, we did Corpo, Jack, Sway, and Diagon with him. And Carlos Tisca, a Spanish designer. He has designed Otto and Lindt. And me and myself, um, well, I've designed only one chair for Gisberger, but I'm involved in every project. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> then we've got Kurt Müller. Even he was focused on the dining collection. And young designers, Andreas Pista and Lars Filligan, they did a very beautiful sideboard for us. And Terry Aubert designed the AL3. There are some other more designers which work with Gis Gisberger. If you're interested, please go to our website. Yeah, that's it. I hope it's clear.